The First Marine Division Brass Quintet is under the direction of Staff Sergeant Kerry Eves. The Color Guard is from Security and Emergency Services Battalion, Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, and is led by Sergeant Wolfgang Lopez from Modesto, California. Please join me in a warm round of applause for the band of the Color Guard. Thank you. At this time, would you please rise for the presentation of colors, remain standing for the playing of our national anthem, followed by Anchors Away and a Marine's Hymn. Sound attention. March on the colors. Forward, march.
Thank you. Please be seated. Ira. Ira. Would you please join me in another round of applause for the band and the color guard, please? Good evening. I'm retired Sergeant Major Frank Pulley, the West Coast Area Representative for the Marine Corps Association. Welcome to our, welcome to our annual West Coast dinner. I know many in attendance tonight have been to each and every one of them, and it's really great to see you. As I look out at this August gathering, it's definitely a reminder of just how fortunate we at the Marine Corps Association are to have your friendship and support. There's so many to thank, and I know who you are, and most importantly, you know who you are. And we wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. As I look out here, I see my good friend here, the 18th Sergeant Major Marine Corps, Ron Sergeant Major Seattle, said they're all here tonight because you owe them money. So they'll be collecting later on. Uh, this is always my favorite part of the celebration, not so much General Tarati's because he knows that he's got a retired but not expired and very active Sergeant Major front and center uh, with no clock in sight with a captive audience. So I think the only thing scarier than that is a private with a duty belt saying I'm in charge or a second lieutenant with a compass saying follow me. <laughs> Seriously, I know the three rules of public speaking. Uh, be there, be quick, and be gone or I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, or I'm done. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is my distinct privilege to introduce the President and CEO of the Marine Corps Association and Foundation, Lieutenant General Charles Tirati. <laughs> Did I do it taking the case here? Thanks, sir. General Smith and I were just sitting there like, he's on it, let's go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here tonight. What is, we believe, our 11th, but I'm told our 12th West Coast Professional Dinner. Uh, we are excited here at the Marine Corps Association to be back here at One Mef. Uh, you know, we just left the East Coast. It's cold. We came here. It's cold. I'm not sure where I want to go next, but um, I'm headed to Salt Lake tomorrow, so let's see if it's a little warmer there. These events don't come together with just me saying, let's go out to California. It takes a team effort. One of them, obviously, is Sergeant Major Retired. Frank Pulley, who's out here. He's the face of the association, uh, good or bad, he's the face. And, uh, you know, Frank, Sergeant Major, excuse me, thank you so much for all you do out here. It truly is great to have you out here. But key amongst the team that makes this happen is my, my vice president for events uh, and sponsorship and everything else, and that's Leanne. Uh, Leanne, Leanne Mitchell. I always, uh, I always start with her, I should end with her, because really uh, this crowd comes together because of her. So Leanne, thank you for all the many years that you've been at the association. And I know we, we don't do you enough honor and justice, but thank you so much for all you do. Part of our team also is Sarah. You don't see her, but she's the one really is the magic behind all the name tapes, the, all, the, all the email addresses. She probably reaches out to you and reminds you to register or whatever. Sarah's out here somewhere, I don't know where she's at, but Sarah Cohen, thank you for your support. New to the team this year, um, and uh, another very, very important person on the team is uh, Marta Sullivan, retired Lieutenant Colonel Marta Sullivan. She is the Director for National Events and Engagements. She is the one that I charge for the, res the responsibility of getting modern day Marine up and running. Marta, I know you're here somewhere. I know many of you know who, who she is. Marta? Marta, yeah, thanks. So this is our second event this year. We've got 22 that we're gonna do uh, across the Marine Corps from, uh, we just finished up Tampa last week uh, or two weeks ago. Uh, great event down there. The first time we'd ever been down in that AOR, down with Major General Rock. General Heckel was up on stage, and for those of you that know General Heckel, myself and General Rock were just counting the oh shits, and the, you know, just, and I can report that he only had five, and, um, and there was a couple of ex other expletives that I won't say tonight, but uh, what a phenomenal event that was. We're gonna go back down there. But like I said, 22 events across the, uh, the Marine Corps that, that really celebrate uh, professional excellence, bring out the professional discussion that you're gonna to hear tonight uh, from our, our guest of honor, and really allow us, more importantly, to have the camaraderie of just being together and breaking bread at uh, my expense. How's that? 
Uh, so thank you, uh, one and all, for doing that. Speaking of awards, this year we will also, the association will also give out 4,400 awards. Think about that, 4,400 awards. Uh, Our, our lineage from General John A. Lejeune was to really recognize professional excellence. And we, we fulfill that uh, by giving out these awards. And it's everything from the honor person at the Marine Corps Recruit Depots all the way up through, you know, our, 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 our big awards that we give, the Leftwich Trophy, and on and on. Only 178 of those awards are awarded to officers. The rest of them are awarded to our enlisted Marines. Think about that for those that might think that this is an officer association. It's not about that. It's about the Marines and the professional development of Marines. And so from the recruit depots to the MEFs to the deputy commandants in, in each of their functional areas, you know, we, we enable the, the, the uh, awarding of professional excellence. And I think that's just a phenomenal job. We could not do that without the support that we receive from all of our memberships and from all of you who are here tonight. So thank you for that. The other thing we do, and we're gonna, we're gonna show you it, but the other thing that we do as an association is that we enable commanders to bring their Marines and their staffs to battlefield studies. And many of you may think, well, you know, what, what are you doing that for, you know? And I will tell you that there's probably no better place to learn as a staff or as an individual Marine as to look through the, look through the lens of history to be able to examine some of the decisions were made regardless of the battle and to be able to examine that and then to run your staffs through that to really before you get ready to cross the line of departure, right? So we enable that because it's part of the professional development. So again, thank you. And then we provide all of the commandant's reading list to all of the units in the Marine Corps and the unit subscription programs and everything else that's needed. Uh, that's what your Marine Corps Association does for you. So. Again, round of applause for, for, for all of those. So at this time, like I always uh, do, is I want to just start off by just thanking some individuals. And most importantly, I want to thank my good friend, Lieutenant General George Smith, uh, for being our guest of honor tonight. Uh, you know, I never know what a MEF commander, his schedule is, uh, you know, he told me today that, you know, he's out. He's got a staff out in the CPX. He just got done speaking at Xia West, uh, and he's all over the place in his AOR trying to get Marines ready for the next uh, event. And so asking him to come here tonight and spend some time with us, truly, a, truly an honor. So George, thank you for the time that you're spending us, with us tonight. I will go into more detail. He gave me the script. I, can only, I can't deviate on his bio, so I have to follow that. His aide pulled me aside and uh, gave me the, uh, read me the riot act, said, this is all you're going to say. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but, but, but thank you so much, Major Sosa, for those encouraging words of wisdom uh, from a major of six years. What is it? Seven years? What do you got? So thank you, Maureen. Thanks so much. I'll make sure that I abide. Trust me. No. Um, at the head table, we're just going to go around and just uh, recognize some, some folks here at the head table as as uh, they were forced to sit with me tonight. And so yeah, I felt sorry for him, so I gotta go around the head table. Mr. Charlie Diaz from Huntington Ingalls, sir, thank you for being here. Our 18th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Ron Green, a good friend of mine who uh, taught me a lot about travels all over Europe and, uh, and how to behave as a parent on a soccer field. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Uh, he got kicked off and I followed suit. So the CG and the, and the commander and the sergeant major getting kicked off the field, it's a long story. Um, major General Gehring and his wife, Denise, sir, thank you, CG of 3rd uh, Marine Aircraft Wing. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you, Gila and Denise. Thanks for being here. Sergeant Major Sayal, I can't speak enough of your leadership and, and the support that you give to the Marine Corps Association. Because of Sergeant Major uh, Seau's uh, support, we're, we're going to roll into another event out here in March that deals with force protection and, and specifically drills down on suicide and suicide prevention. And uh, we'll be able to sponsor that. Uh, his vision is, is enabling that. We'll be back out here to, to provide a venue and to provide the support that he requires to do that. So thank you. Because of that, the other two MEFs 
uh, have asked us to follow suit. So we're off to Lejeune and then Okinawa to do the same for them. And then we'll, we'll culminate that with MAR-4 res in, in modern day Marine later on. So thank you very much, sorry, Major Sam. Um, Mr. Greg Finch from uh, V2X, sir. Did I see you here? Oh, there you go. Thanks so much for being here. Um, Chief of Staff, Colonel Rhett Rideout. Where you at, sir? Yeah, how are you? I know you're a busy guy, so thanks for being here. My good friend and my former boss, Lieutenant uh, General Dave Beidler, sir, thank you for being here, Smoke. Colonel Pete Ahorn, as always, you're looking younger every day, a lot more hair than I do, so thank you for that. Um, Sergeant Major Lynn Kimball, Sergeant Major representing USA, so if you have a problem with your insurance company, right there. Right? My, my, my rates have gone up, so I want to know about it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. In addition to the head table, we've got a lot of great folks out here tonight, and, I, and if, I, if I omit somebody, please uh, blame it on my staff. Okay, so uh, Brigadier General Jason Morse, sir, are you out here? MCRD, uh, San Diego Western Recruiting Region, his wife, Jane Conwell. Ma'am, thank you for being here as well. Uh, Brigadier General Rideout, Deputy uh, Commander, 1MEF. Brother, good to see you. Uh, Major General Ben Watson. Ben, it's always good to see you. CG, 1st Mardiv. Uh, Brigadier General James Ryans, Assistant Division Commander. Good to see you. Uh, your boss told me to put you there, so I apologize. He just said, <laughs> damn, Ben. Uh, you said to move him far away from me, and I did. So <laughs> that was pretty far. Brigadier General Phil, uh, Phil Fritz and his wife, Kathy. Phil, good to see you, Kathy. Uh, CG First uh, Marine Logistics Group. In the, in the crowd, we also have a lot of retired generals, uh, so if, I, if you just uh, bear with me just for a minute here. Major General Pete Tulare, retired, sir. Great to see you. Lieutenant General Ed Hanlon, sir, where are you at? Ed, good to see you, yep. Uh, Brigadier General Baja Kalea, sir, oh, looking great. Uh, Brigadier, uh, Major General Mark Clark, Group Troopy, good to see you, sir. And Brigadier General Paul Lebedine, I know you're here, Paul. And I'd like to special shout out to Brigadier General Mike Neal, sir, uh, Navy Cross winner, Vietnam, right? Oh. right. <laughs> to all the commanders, sergeants, majors, and master gunner sergeants, uh, XOs out here, welcome to you too. And thank you for supporting us. Uh, this t t tonight wouldn't happen with all the Marines here without your support. Um, we also have with us uh, some special guests. Uh, really, I, I wasn't aware of this, so I apologize. But uh, from the country of Colombia, I'd like to I'd like to just call out Vice Admiral Orlando Grisales, sir, and his uh, he is the Chief of Naval Operations uh, for Colombia, and his wife Katia. Yeah. Uh, Brigadier General Jorge Federico Torres, Commandant of the Colombian Marine Corps. Sir. And he's accompanied by Sergeant Major of the Colombian Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Michelle Turboni, Ter Ter excuse me. Also with him is Rear Admiral Norman Cabrera. Sir, thank you for being here. We have some uh, State Department guests, uh, and then we have some other folks from the embassy and the DAO office. Thank you, gentlemen, and Katia, for being here. You honor us with your presence tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Your takeaway for tonight should be that you, this is how one meth parties every night. This is General Smith. We throw a dinner. He asks, we do it. So that's the lesson learned of one meth. I'd also like to introduce, and it really is my honor tonight, to introduce a very special person here tonight. Everyone's special, but tonight, uh, you don't get this honor very often, but tonight we have an Iwo Jima veteran uh, with us. Uh, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Chuck Cram.
That's awesome. That's awesome. 97 years old, ladies and gentlemen. He drove his kids here tonight. I just want you to know that. Uh, they informed me. So make sure that you leave before he does, OK? Thank you, Chuck. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'd also like to, to, to welcome uh, Mrs. Emily Gino. Emily, right there. Uh, she is not only a great supporter of, of the Marine Corps Association, but her husband fought on Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima. truly talk about the greatest generation. So thank you, both of you, for being here tonight and representing that generation. Thank you. I'm not part of it, <laughs> trust me. I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> Perhaps the most important group here are our Marines, all right? We've got about 260 young Marines here. You are the future of not only our Marine Corps, but our country. I thank you for being here. I thank you for your service. And then, and then kind of winding down in my thanks here, a special thanks goes out to our in, in, industry partners. Uh, and I, every dinner that I do, I reach out and I have to say this because it's very important. As a Marine, sometimes we, we lose sight of the fact that our industry, they truly are partners in everything that we do. We may have a vision, we may have a requirement, but without them, without the industry partner to walk alongside of us, it, it really is not possible. Tonight is that opportunity for us to break bread together, to talk with each other, to exchange ideas, cards, whatever it might be, make no promises, but it is important because if you want to deliver on tomorrow's future capabilities, it starts in places like this. So thank you very much to our sponsors who make everything possible here and for your continued support of the Marine Corps Association. A big hand out to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> so um, we've gone through the we've gone through the kind of the list of thank yous. I'm going to come back up after after we've had dinner and uh, talk a little bit more about our guest of honor. But before we do, two more things we need to do. One is to hear the voice of the association and then give the benediction. So Frank, are you there? If you could start us off with that, that would be great. Let us pray. Almighty God, our heavenly Father. We recall that 78 years ago, Marines of our country stormed ashore on Iwo Jima from ships of the Navy. Grant that we, who are the inheritors of that legacy, may preserve a nation worthy of the sacrifices that they made. Grant that the Marines of today may be inspired by the example of courage and fortitude that has been set for them Protect and guard them from the dangers of the enemy. Bless the food we're about to receive of your bounty and keep us ever mindful of the needs of others, all of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your meals. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed my honor and privilege tonight to introduce not only a great friend, but uh, our, our guest of honor and uh, Marine really the, requires no introduction, but because the major told me to do it, uh, it is 10 font uh, as compared to, to my speech, which is, for those of you in the back, if you can't see that, 25 font. <laughs> so if I get this wrong, and uh, it's not because I'm not trying, it's really because I can't see, so. George was born in, no. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lieutenant General George Smith currently serves as the commanding general of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. Comprised of 47,000 Marines and sailors, 1MEF is the largest Marine Air Ground Task Force in the United States Marine Corps. Better known as the Imperial MEF, but I didn't say that. <clears throat> General Smith was commissioned in 1985 and upon graduation from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. A career infantry officer, he's commanded at every level from platoon to the Marine Expeditionary Force. His notable assignments as a general officer, besides being my friend when we were together in the E-Ring, uh, 
Prior to taking command of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, he was the Director of Strategy, Plans, and Policy Director at U.S. Central Command, Senior Military Assistant to the Secretary of Defense, and Deputy Commandant for Plans, Policies, and Operations Headquarters, Marine Corps, the ops, Operations Deputy at one point. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Major, am I, did I do that good? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Thanks. Let me get out of your way. What are expeditionary forces? An expeditionary force is like the expeditionary warriors that man it. They have an expeditionary state of mind. They are comfortable with uncertainty and capable of handling adversity. They have the ability to adapt and improvise. They have an ability to start from scratch and make up solutions as they go. And they have the ability to do it all with less. To drive a nail with a shovel if they don't have a hammer. This passage is from an article in our professional journal, the Marine Corps Gazette, nearly three decades ago entitled Expeditionary Warfare, written by then Lieutenant General Charles Wilhelm, the Commanding General of Marine Corps Combat Development Command, and one of the intellectual giants of our Corps. Like our capstone doctrinal publication, Warfighting, General Wilhelm's article speaks to the timeless aspects of who we are as Marines, our ethos, especially those of us who serve in a command for which expeditionary is our middle name. Tonight I'd like to talk just a little bit about our expeditionary force, the, co the continued value of the Marine Air Ground Logistics Team <clears throat> as the foundation for all domain combined arms warfighting. And finally, I'd like to touch on the innovation and experimentation across the MEF that will enable our success today and in the future. But first, my thanks to my good friend, Lieutenant Colonel Chuck Shiroti, and the entire Marine Corps Association team for once again bringing this event to the West Coast. Lord knows none of us want to go back to DC. <laughs> As well, uh, my thanks to our industry partners who so generously make events like this evening happen and continue to enable our Corps' modernization efforts to ensure that our Marines will be equipped to fight and win on any battlefield. And finally, to all the Marines here this evening in the audience, retired active duty, and hopefully some future Marines, and to the families and friends who have joined us this evening, my personal welcome to you all. In, in further addressing the ex expeditionary question, General Wilhelm stated, expeditionary is immediately deploying and employing balanced combined arms and integrated air ground components of almost any size and configurations. Expeditionary warfare forces can take the shape of their mission or their operating environment. They are not bound to tables of organization but are like kaleidoscopes. Changing the mission is like twisting the prism. But instead of a new pattern, a new force emerges. One MEF has lived what General Wilhelm spoke of in the nine months since we last gathered in this magnificent ballroom. I would add with some amount of pride that during August of last year, Marines and sailors of one Marine Expeditionary Force were conducting operations and exercises in every geographic combatant command. In Australia, Guam, the Philippines, Palau, Hawaii, Alaska, Chile, Brazil, East Africa, Saudi Arabia, Poland, and along the borders of our Southwest United States. Yours is unquestionably a global expeditionary force operating in every climate place. 
A few specific examples. Last May, 7th Marines under the command of Colonel Dave Hart participated in the MAGTAF warfighting exercise. Our Corps' premier all-domain force-on-force exercise at the Combat Center 29 Palms. Operating as a traditional infantry regiment, Colonel Hart led the regiment in a series of completely dismounted attacks covering over 40 kilometers all at night over the course of five days. Less than two weeks later, the 7th Marines headquarters morphed into Marine Air Ground Task Force 7. They embarked on amphibious ships in San Diego and deployed as a MAGTAF command element for the next two months to exercise Rim of the Pacific, the world's largest international maritime exercise, participating alongside 25,000 of our allies and partners from 26 nations. As you would imagine, MAGTAF 7 knocked it out of the park, drawing praise from senior leaders across the joint force as well as from our allies and partners. Your regiment of desert warriors quickly transitioned to an amphibious mission and reconfigured their headquarters, not bound by tables of organization, but like a kaleidoscope. They changed the mission like twisting the prism, and a new force emerged. This exemplifies the fabric of the MAGTAF, our secret sauce, if you will, as Marines, comfortably and confidently changing task organization, leveraging habitual relationships to support mission accomplishment, generating speed and tempo in the process. This is what we do. This is who we are. During exercise Valued Shield last June, Colonel Sean Hoeing, the CEO of Marine Aircraft Group 16, deployed to Palau in a non-standard organization built from throughout the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing and masterfully tackled the myriad of tasks in enabling joint force aviation from a bare bones advanced naval base in the Western Pacific. Aside from all of the innovation that he has been driving in his group down at Miramar, like the innovation that is occurring in all the groups within 3rd Maw. Colonel Hoeing's leadership and his task-organized team's efforts were particularly impressive against the backdrop of the tyranny of distance in the Western Pacific. This past August, Combat Logistics Regiment 1, commanded by Colonel Ryan Scott, conducted a maritime pre-positioning squadron offload in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as part of Exercise Native Fury, demonstrating the rapid offload and integration of a, marine, of a maritime pre-position force in support of regional security, crisis response, and contingency operations. Operating in the sweltering heat of Saudi Arabia with temperatures reaching 139 degrees, over 1,000 Marines from 1st Marine Logistics Group successfully offloaded over 300 vehicles, which then traveled a combined 72,000 miles across Saudi Arabia without a single incident. In a word, amazing. Our inaugural deployment from one left down under as Marine Rotational Force Darwin was yet another tremendous success. Again, a regimental headquarters. This time, 5th Marines under Colonel Chris Steele served as the nucleus of a Marine Air Ground Task Force command element for what was truly a fight tonight MAGTAF, one that was certified to accomplish sea denial task as part of a naval campaign. No new discrete purpose-built formation required. Simply an infantry regimental headquarters task organized and expertly led to operate across, across the spectrum of contingencies anywhere around the globe. 
while continuing to strengthen our relationship with our Australian allies. Our most novel deployment was the recently concluded Marine Rotational Force Southeast Asia under the command of Colonel Tom Sieverts and his 11th Mu Command Element. Building on our activities and investments in the Indo-Pacific, the 11th Mu Command Element deployed a 175 Marine and Sailor Task Organized Force west of the International Dateline last fall and participated in key bilateral training events and engagements with allies and partners across Southeast Asia. <laughs> Gaining and maintaining access to key maritime terrain is crucial to the future fight in the Western Pacific, just as it has been throughout history. Murph C, as we called it, served as a shining example of employing relatively small yet high impact forces in steady state campaigning to enable our rapid response to crisis and contingencies in that all important theater. My guidance to all of these commanders has been consistent and concise. Be respectful guests. Be the partner of choice while strengthening relationships with our allies and partners. Build readiness at every turn. Seek out and exploit every opportunity and engagement. Look at every exercise through a contingency lens. I continue to be amazed at what these commanders and their Marines and sailors accomplish when you give them maximum room to maneuver. And as I speak this evening, one of our traditional MAGTAFs, the 13th Marine Expeditionary Unit, commanded by Colonel Country Meyer, and embarked on the Macon Island Amphibious Readiness Group, is conducting integrated expeditionary strike force operations with a Nimitz carrier strike group in the South China Sea and creating quite a stir with our principal adversary in the Pacific. <clears throat> and as we lean to, into 2023, one MEF has been tasked to take a leading role in strengthening relationships with the armed forces of the Philippines by serving as a Joint Task Force Headquarters during Exercise Balakatan later this spring. We will also expand our role in Australia and assume a greater responsibility for contingencies on the Korean Peninsula. In broad terms, over the next few months, we will demonstrably and tangibly execute, in concert with 3MEF, the vision of two Marine Expeditionary Forces operating west of the International Dateline. This is powerful for our Marine Corps. We will follow Balakatan with additional exercises in both the Philippines and Australia, including Northern Edge, Pacific Sentry, and Talisman Sabre. In a number of these, our major subordinate commands, 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing, 1st Marine Division, 1st Marine Logistics Group, will have the lead. This demonstrates the depth of our MEF, and in particular, the command and control resiliency we will absolutely need in a high-end fight. And as an aside, as a core, we haven't talked about these commands enough over the past few years. We need to. After all, it's divisions and, we, and wings that ground us in law. We must never, ever forget that. Let me shift gears a bit and talk about the innovation and experimentation within one MEF. The modern battlefield requires us to fight and win across all domains, seamlessly integrating efforts in each to achieve decisive actions in support of the joint combined force. That's modern day combined arms warfighting. This requires a real spirit of innovation and aggressive experimentation. I see that in spades across this entire MAGTAF. Our Marines are learning quickly at the tactical edge at 1MEF, and we appreciate our role as a maritime and operational laboratory. Last summer, we established a G9 within the MEF staff, led by Colonel Jim Lively 
to better synchronize our efforts across the MAGTAF while partnering with the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab in the Office of Naval Research to strengthen their connections within OneMEF. In September, we hosted Technical Concept Experimentation 22, which brought together cohorts of data, data analysts, technologists, and warfighters that focused on sea control operations and expeditionary advanced basing maneuverability. In October, the Army's Joint Modernization Command came here to the SoCal Innovation Lab of Camp Pendleton, the so-called SoCal Sandbox, to host Project Convergence 22, with nearly 200 joint and coalition general and flag officers in attendance, as well as the Deputy Secretary of Defense and the Joint All-Domain Command and Control Office. In November and December, with 1st Marine Division leading the charge, we executed a reimagined exercise steel night with our Navy partners at 3rd Fleet, maturing this exercise into a true naval, war, naval targeting and warfighting rehearsal. And just last week, forces from 1MEF, led by Colonel Jeremy Winters and his Control Group 38 Marines, provided a truly impressive demonstration at the U.S. Indo-PACOM Commanders Conference in Hawaii, executing cutting-edge all-domain command and control capabilities to enable the entire joint force. I attended that conference, and I got to tell you, the wow factor was high. Moreover, anyone that knows Admiral Aquilino the Indo-PACOM commander knows that he's a tough grader. He could not stop talking about those young Marines who have innovated and experimented to bring these capabilities to life. Yet one more example of the young men and women wearing the Eagle Globe and Anchor serving as the best representatives of our Corps. I've talked about the fabric of our Marine Air Ground Logistics Task Forces, our special sauce and some of the ingredients that comprise that special sauce. Let there be no question, we can have the best concepts, the ideal structures, and all the right equipment. We can get everything else right, but it won't work without the ability to recruit, develop, and retain the right young men and women. The primary ingredient for our continued success remains the individual Marine. Our young Marines remain our asymmetric advantage against any adversary. I want to take you back to General Wilhelm's article for just a moment, where he stated, expeditionary is exceptional flexibility and personnel of all ranks with the initiative to solve problems with minimal support and only broad guidance. Technical skills and a military occupational specialty are not enough. Expeditionary, every expeditionary warrior must be a utility infielder. I offer the story of Lance Corporal Christian Potgeiter from our inaugural Marine Rotational Force Southeast deployment as a perfect example of what General Wilhelm highlighted. This Marine, an 0311 infantryman by trade with no additional specialty training, was assigned as a sensor operator. He received a new commercial radar system to experiment with, dove into the manuals, reached out to the program managers at the software company, and on his own initiative, became the subject matter expert for the unit. By the end of the deployment, Lance Corporal Potgeiter had integrated the radar into their comm systems, provided digital and autonomous maritime tracks directly to the Seventh Fleet headquarters in Japan, a first with this new system, and was briefing host nation and joint uh, flag and general officers on radar operations in sensing expeditionary advance bases. Then he captured these lessons learned, formalized them into after-action reports, and submitted them to the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab and Headquarters Marine Corps. 
Where do we find such Marines? And then how do we keep them? Well, to the latter task, let me salute the commanders and senior leaders in the audience here this evening for your tremendous leadership on the ever-challenging retention front. For the first time in 20 years, the Marine Corps has made our aggregate retention mission two years in a row for both our first-term Marines and our career force Marines. And amidst many success stories, one MEF contributed over half of the first-term infantry Marines for the entire Marine Corps retention mission, closing this traditionally hard-to-fill MOS at the end of January. What's the secret? I'm convinced it's good old-fashioned leadership. I'll probably get a phone call tomorrow morning when I say this. But I personally don't like the word management when we're talking about people. To me, it's leading talented Marines. It's having substantive discussions with those in our charge. It's listening to our Marines and their families. Really listening. That's what our commanders, sergeants major, and leaders at every echelon are doing throughout this MEF. And it's paying big dividends for our core. Again, my deepest thanks to not only to our leaders here this, this, this evening, but also to the spouses and families who enable us to keep such talented Marines and Marine families on our team. Now let's keep the pedal down as we press into fiscal year 2024. I'll close where I began this evening with one final quote from General Wilhelm, which speaks to the type of young Americans we're looking for to join and remain on our team, especially here in OneMEF. Expeditionary is not done part-time or as an additional duty. Expeditionary warfare is not a job, but a way of life requiring special attitudes and aptitudes. Sunday drivers and couch potatoes need not apply. <laughs> Thank you, General Sirodi and team, for another great evening. God bless you all and Semper Fidelis. To General Smith, uh, he posed the question of where do you find men and women like the 0311, and I would simply say probably in the 1st Marine Logistics Group or a logistician. I'm pretty sure that he wasn't an 0311. He was probably a logistics officer or a logistics Marine. I'm sorry. So, George, thank you. George, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you, the, the reality that you bring to the discussion uh, and what you said just resonates, whether you're active duty, retired, or whatever. Uh, spoken f with experience, spoken with a deep sense of passion, you can't, you, can't, you can't buy that. General Smith, thank you for your time. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for making sure that our MEF is ready to meet any challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, we draw the evening to a conclusion I want to thank all of you for participating in tonight. I hope that you gained as much insight into OneMEF and General Smith as I have tonight. Enjoyed the camaraderie and uh, just the, the good evening of, of socializing and, and everything else. I want to wish you all fair winds and following seas. I want you to drive safe home. Sergeant Major Seattle's on duty tonight. Uh, and I'm sure if you have a problem, you can dial his number. Uh, but. Uh, I just want to thank you for being part of this evening and being, being great supporters of the Marine Corps Association. Again, to General Smith, Sergeant Major Seau, thank you so much for your leadership of OneMEF. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.